John is with Sight, Sightline Technologies, right? Um, he knows a lot about this stuff. Um, he did a seminar a couple years ago, and he uh, it was did such a good job. We wanted him back because there's a lot of good information, and as I'm, I'm sure you're aware, it's ever changing really quickly. So, you got the floor. All right, thank you. All right, so tonight uh, we're doing smart home technology, or better known as the gr the Internet of Things. Anybody have any kind of smart devices in their house, like maybe an Alexa? Google Assistant, okay. Um, so if you have those, or do you have it tied to anything? Is it, are you just using it to like set timers, check the weather, or do you have it turning something on and off? Like some things that are tied to each other. Okay, so you're just using it for music. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that's one of the one of the things that it does get used a lot for. Okay. Intercom. Yeah, okay. So that's kind of the stuff that is really getting big over the last couple of years is the voice interaction. We're getting to the Star, Tech, Star Trek era where you can just basically, you know, talk to your, you know, at the office we call it, Pe we call it Peggy. We don't call it Alexa, otherwise the office would light up because we have them sitting on our desk and stuff. So we, we, call, we call Alexa Peggy, and that way it solves the problem of nothing happening. But uh, we, we putz around with a lot. So I'm going to go over kind of a, a starter level thing. Try to not to go through too fast. If you have questions, raise your hands. Go ahead and ask. Um, just going to start with some different devices out there, kind of the more common ones. The smart locks uh, that people put at their front door. They can be Bluetooth, Z-Wave. There's a couple different ways to do it. Several different manufacturers. I just picked ones that had good pictures. Is that the screen on top of the lock? No, this is the, like this one, that's where the battery, battery stored, battery storage. So like this one has a longer life on the batteries than the smaller one does. And boy, when, when you're talking those locks, that's one thing. It's like, you know, they're battery powered. So, you know, the more batteries you have in it, the longer it lasts before you have to switch or charge batteries. So when the battery is out, no, then it's then it's locked. But then a lot of these, and this is this one's on the inside, so you have a manual trip on the on the inside. But then your outside keypad wouldn't work if the batteries are dead. Uh, just screw in lights. I brought one with uh, from Linear. Uh, that's kind of the one of the quickest ways to get controlled lights via Z-Wave or Zigbee or whatever, because uh, you just screw it in. And the smart is included in the light, and since they're LED lights, they're rated for you know usually 20,000 hours. So those lights will go a long time before you need to replace them, and they're one of the simplest way to get control of your lighting. Uh, switches and modules, many different varieties. Um, these switches here are battery powered again. They literally just go right over the top of the of the light. So that's a really easy way, another easy way to get control of a light. Uh, this Leviton module is just a plug-in module in the wall. Another way, you plug it in, you're good to go. Uh, the light switches I actually like because you don't have to have something smart to control them. You can go up there and just turn them on and off, but they also work with a control system. So that's, that's kind of my favorite, but you know, it takes a little more to install them. And like you have dimmers, switches, and it, it runs the gamut. Thermostats, another real popular one. Uh, again, many different companies. This, is, this happens to be a Nest. Uh, there's Ecobee, uh, April Air, Honeywell. They all make them. Generally, they're Wi-Fi thermostats, so they don't have to, have, they don't have to talk to a hub that some of the other technologies have to talk to a hub before they uh, will work with like Alexa or something like this. This actually may not work directly with Alexa anymore because uh, we just had our big first round of smart things stopped working with each other because Google kind of pulled the plug on works with Nest. So that's a whole nother story. Uh, garage door openers, uh, another popular one. Uh, usually the old days we usually had to put something in between but most of the new ones now Go right on your Wi-Fi, you download an app onto your phone, 
and you can remotely keep an eye on your garage door opener. It'll tell you if it's open, if it's closed. You can set alarms for if it gets left open. You can remotely open it to let you know somebody into the house. Uh, they're actually in the the price difference between the smart ones and the regular ones isn't that much anymore. Uh, I've got three of the three of those sitting on on the Wi-Fi at home. It comes in handy. Shades, they, they make them. There's actually some really interesting ones out there now because they're battery powered. So they're pretty easy to, they're actually fairly easy to install because there's just a bunch of lithium ion batteries in there. And now they have little chargers that you can, you basically if, if you can get a charging cable close enough to it, you just tap it on there and let it charge it up and they're good for quite a long time depending on how much they're going up and down. Ceiling fans. They're out there. I don't, I don't know if people are using them a lot, but it's another thing that is on the smart things. Works with multiple companies uh, and just load an app on your phone. Sprinklers, easiest way. If anybody's got sprinklers, the smartphone apps are the simplest way to control your sprinklers. Yeah. So I have a Hunter uh, I have a sprinkler system, the Hunter box. Yeah. Is it easy to retrofit something like that? Or do I have to get a whole new module? Usually you have to get a hold of, well, it, it, the, the module itself has to be smart enough usually to take a Wi-Fi card. I've got a Rainbird, and you had to buy a separate little Wi-Fi uh, module that plugged into it. But boy, when you looked at that module and trying to program it, I'd always call my sprinkler guy. And once I got the app, it was easy. Yeah, it, it just it makes it so much easier. So that's, that is one nice thing that you tend to see is when there's an app for it. It just makes it a lot easier to control things because it's, it's just a much friendlier interface. Uh, water valves to shut stuff off. I brought an example of one. Um, I think that's even the same one, yeah. Because this one actually just straps to the, your, the piping in your house so it's, you don't actually need a plumber to install it. A lot of the early ones, you had to have a plumber install. This, you can just, it straps onto the pipe and it, shuts, it can shut the valve on and off and you can trip them manual, you can trip them off your smartphone again, or you can tie it to a, a water sensor. I know like one of the AT&T commercials that they had out where the, the, the kid shows up at the lake and the dad asks him, did you turn the water off? And he's, yeah, and he goes on his phone and starts turning everything off that they left home in the house. Well, that's basically what they were turning off is. They weren't turning off the faucet, they were turning off a valve to shut off all the water in the house. How is that valve operated? Batteries. Yeah, so basically you only get usually a couple shutoffs with them, but theoretically you're not shutting it off very often. This really comes in handy for, to me, is like security systems and if you have them tied to water monitors, because how many basements got flooded in Bloomington this year? Do you even know? It's actually a fairly common thing. I had a pilot that we were literally discussing this, and he stayed up at his cabin up north a lot and his house is in Egan and like three weeks after we we're discussing this he had gone up to the cabin for a week or two and a water line broke and there was you know a foot of water in the basement you know but it run down throughout the house and it just it causes you know lots of damage so these are actually pretty good things that can and you don't have to have security monitoring to do it they have other ways to do it yes would this be a good idea? See, I have my aunt and uncle down in Iowa. They go bye bye this winter, and they put antifreeze stuff in the line so they won't freeze up. Wow. He's a farm, one of the farmers, so they are a little different than the city kids. Uh, would this work in his house? You know, but should, as you said, it turns if out. If you want to leave the water on, yeah. Because then you tie it to like, and that's another reason why the the smart thermostats go so popular because like a smart thermostat you can control it but it'll also tell you some things it'll let you know hey you know I'm set for 65 and it's 55 degrees in the house so you'll get an alert from your smart thermostat saying hey it's too cold in here uh, so that comes in handy for people who are traveling cabins up north houses here in the cities especially during the winter and then this would be one way to shut the water off it's so like that would help Mm -hmm. Would that help? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. How, how does it shut the water off? This is your main shut off for the house. And the, there's, a, there's a, an electric motor in here with the batteries. 
and when you trip it, it just, that little thing, just, there's a little arm in there that swings that valve around, and then that valve shuts, it, shuts off the water to your house. So you do have to have the right valve, but that's pretty common for oh, homes in the last uh, 15 years or so. A lot of the older homes, like in the 50s and 60s, have that round shutoff handle by the water meter. But the other one is difficult to move. The, the round one? Yeah, the newer ones, these ball, ball valves are really easy. So, and that's... You, you can connect them to controllers. Because they have standalone products. So, this is really popular in the security, the security arena that I work in. So, so you have it as part of your security monitoring, but they do make standalone systems, which just work on their own. So you can, you can put a water monitor in the basement that just literally talks to that. If it senses water, it shuts off that valve. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of different companies that make them now. It's a, it's a fairly popular item because water does majority of the damage to homes. Uh, security systems, um, a, lot of the, a lot of the companies now make uh, security systems that work on Z-Wave platforms. Um, on the internet platforms that you don't need to have professional come in and install it. Um, they're meant to be self-installed and they tie right to apps. You can also get professional monitoring with them. So there's no contracts? Mm -hmm. you, can, you can do what they call self-monitor or quite often even like Ring's kind of a popular one right now because it ties in with your Ring camera system. Uh, you can self-monitor it which sends you the alert or you can also pay like, I mean, it's like 10 or $15 a month for professional monitoring, then it goes out to a monitoring center. And that's about the cheapest I've seen for security monitoring. And that kind of ties into the video cameras and doorbells. Almost everything you see on the news where they're catching porch nappers are usually the, these video doorbells. And so these have gotten really, really, really popular. In fact, I my phone was ringing just before this started because I've got, I've got this sky bell on, on the front door. And so you get your mobile alerts if somebody you know, hits the doorbell, you can talk to them, see video, records, it looks for motion, so when the Amazon guy comes up and puts your packages on the front porch, it records all that, and then if somebody comes up and decides to take them, they'll, you'll, get, you'll get all the video of them doing that, and that's usually what winds up on the evening news. And I'm sure the City of Bloomington Police Department's seen a lot of those videos. Because I do that professionally too, and I, I turn a lot, I, for my commercial customers, and so I give a lot of video to the different PDs around town. I presume you do the video cameras not just at the door, because mine sort of now do it by the garage door, because mm -hmm. it sets back a little. Yeah, Ring. So this is a Ring. Uh, Ring has a whole gamut of cameras. They, they were purchased by uh, Amazon a couple years ago, and they have a whole gamut. So if you have like, like my son's got a Ring system, and he's got a garage in South Minneapolis, no power, typical South Minneapolis detached garage. So where he parks his car, he has a Ring camera, and right next to it he's got a little solar panel that comes with it. And even through the winter, it'll keep that, it'll keep that camera charged up. Yeah, I'm just wondering, that's where I think I put it right close to it. It also gets the mailbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, there's, Ring's the major company that does that, but they, call, they have what they call their stick-up cameras. And then they have a solar panel, it's about this big, this runs like $49. And that's how, you, that's how you charge up the camera. And they generally work pretty good. You know, you might have to knock some snow off it during the winter, but it, I don't remember Aaron telling me that he didn't knock any snow off this winter. So... But where I think I would want to put it, it sits back from the, you probably won't get, unless we get one of those major splizzards. Oh, yeah. Which we had. Yeah, we had plenty of those. Yeah, so, yeah, so there's options where you can put them all around the house, and I don't know if you think you've probably seen the Shack commercials. He does commercials for Ring, and they, they, have, a, they have their spotlight cameras. They have a whole, whole bunch of them. John, yes. Those same companies that pull that you're talking like three, four yeah. locations. You just put them up. Yeah, the only thing we'll run into sometimes if you get them too far away is you might have to do something to boost your Wi-Fi a little bit, um, and then there's several easy ways to do that too. Um, in fact, one of my favorite companies just got bought, 
Eero makes really good uh, retrofit Wi-Fi systems, E-E-R-O, and they just got bought by Amazon within the last couple months. They make some really good stuff. Uh, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors um, that tie into apps. Um, little, the Nest ones are really popular, but Kitty makes them and uh, Honeywell makes them. So they're moving away from batteries? No, they're battery powered, but generally they have, like usually most smoke and carbon ones that you get that tie to apps and stuff, they're battery powered, but they have several like three volt lithium batteries on, in them. And those things will run for five to 10 years before you have to change the, change the batteries. And it'll send you an alert saying, hey, battery's low, you need to change batteries. Mine sounds like a bird. Yeah, those are the hard, yeah, those are the, your typical installed ones that just start chirping. Like I said, these send you an email. So when you deal with the smart ones, they'll send you emails or texts. Just depends on how you want to get it. Uh, refrigerators, yeah, they're, Samsung's is getting really popular, but um, that's tying to the, the whole internet of things. And the latest, which I, uh, the ovens, and, ovens and stoves, you can get smart connected stoves. And I, did I have, yeah, appliances. So. It's not so much these, the, your water heaters, even though you can get them, I've got one, um, is the washer dryers. They, they're really, LG and Samsung are really, really pushing it. Could you store, start the fire in your phone? They, what? Could you store, store, start the fire in your phone? If it is hijacked? Oh, I suppose it could. I mean, stoves start like 90% of all home fires. But yeah, so if you leave something on the stove, you start it up, or if it starts on fire, yeah. But then hopefully everything else will go off and let you know you got a fire. Now you said this washer and dryer, what exactly it does? It Do you have one? You have one? No? I, I just know they're out there. I haven't, I haven't had to connect any for them, but I see the commercials, and then I know a guy at Warner Stellion that I kind of chit chat with to find out what's new. And it's just, that's, you know, it's the newest thing. Something like that when I went looking for him, I thought you can wave a time when it's going to lift off. Now, I guess. <laughs> I thought one of the coolest things I saw was at L. Somebody is advertising it now where you just, you just basically take your, your soap and fill up the chamber. And then you're, you're done for however long that lasts. So it just has a big chamber in it now. I thought that was pretty cool. The water heater you have? Like, what one? Oh, uh, Ream, or no. Is it Ream? Yeah, Ream, it's a smart one. So it, it ties to the, to the Wi-Fi system. You can change the temp, you can get alerts. It was, it was like an extra 20 bucks when I bought the, the water heater, so I got it just to mess around with it. That's what I, us tech guys do. We just get stuff to mess with it, see what's going on. Wireless music is a big thing these days. Um, Sonos, MusicCast, if you want to have music around the house, it's rather easy to set up now. Uh, no more having to run wires everywhere and this, that, and the other thing. And it ties to Alexa and Google Assistant, so you don't even have to go over there and press a button. You can just have them play the most popular music, and yeah, it works real nice. And then on to voice interaction, Alexa and Google Home. Those are the two big guys in the market. We still have Siri with Apple and uh, Apple Homelink, but that's really, believe it or not, is really small in the, in the marketplace. It's these two guys that are kind of leading the pack. Um, and they're, they have a whole string of devices that will work with them. So you can you know, unlock and unlock your doors. You can, it can be linked to your thermostat, so you can change your thermostat setting, turn the, thermo turn the HVAC off. Uh, you can link it to your security system. You can link it just about anything these days. Um, I could go on for a long time, but it, and it does make uh, the home of the future is pretty much here now, where you can, you could literally run most of your house by talking to one of these things. But there are, there are some other issues with, with this that I'll get into later. So this is kind of the big thing, is how do these devices to communicate? So if you're thinking about getting smart home devices, 
that's what you got to know is basically we have uh, we have all these different ones. We have Kitty's got their own kind of their own way of doing things. I didn't put Samsung on here. They've kind of got their own way. Lutron's got some of their kind of way to go, but um, the big ones are these three: Wi-Fi, Z-Wave, and Zigbee. In fact, most likely it's going to be Z-Wave and Wi-Fi because somebody came up with a chip, a very inexpensive Wi-Fi chip now that they can put in devices. <clears throat> so we're starting to see more Wi-Fi enabled devices than we are anything else because then once they're on the network, it's easier for them to talk to Google Assistant or Alexa. Uh, so we are starting to see a lot of Wi-Fi enabled light switches, you name it. We're starting to see a lot more of that compared to Z-Wave and Zigbee. Um, Zigbee is kind of the smaller one because it's a closed platform of the big three. Z-Wave is the biggest platform that you'll usually see devices. They'll, they'll list right on the front that they're Z-Wave or Zigbee devices. Oh, where does it say it on there? See, like this one, Z-Wave, dimmable LED light bulb. So that's the, one of the things you got to look, look for is how these things are communicating. And that's one, one reason I think we're move, they're moving towards Wi-Fi because they're figuring that most people have internet in their homes. And if you've got internet, you've got Wi-Fi, which makes it easier. Because... Yeah. Like the range, though, and the frequency that the other ones run on, is that the advantage of like, making a lower frequency? Yeah, Z-Wave -Wave and Zigbee operate at lower frequencies, whereas your Wi-Fi is going to be at 2.4. There's no way those devices are going to be running at, at 5 gigahertz because it's they've got to transmit through stuff. And so most of them, all of them are going to be running at 2.4. And your range, uh, your range will really vary. Um, if you have a newer home, you'll get a lot more range. If you've got an older home in Minneapolis, yeah, you're in trouble. I've got a couple homes that I work with that the, the houses are built like Sherman tanks. And you know, I've got five wireless access points in a 2,000 square foot house to get them wireless, you know, what you know, wireless servers throughout their home, but I've got bars that I've got five, you know, five access points covering 10,000 square feet. So it all depends on how the house is built, and that's that's why I'm going to be interested to see what happens with the with the big push to Wi-Fi because it's also causing an, another issue. Um, so when you deal with Zigbee, Bluetooth, and all the other ones, what you wind up is with these hubs. And the hub is what talks to your smart device. So if it's Zigbee, Z-Wave, Bluetooth, uh, Eco, or not, Kitty, Samsung, most of these hubs will talk to just about everything. And, that's you, and Wink's one of the more popular ones, the Wink Hub 2. You see it at Home Depot and stuff. It'll generally talk to anything. And you have to have it. And then th that is usually the app on your phone. So. And that's how, that's then when you're using your smartphone on your screen to control things, it's talking to the hub, and the hub is then talking to the installed device. And that's why it's important to know what communication platform they're on, because otherwise you could wind up with a bunch of stuff that's not talking to one another. And again, that's why I think the manufacturers are moving towards Wi-Fi, because it's very standardized. Uh, lots. Lots of different manufacturers. I kind of picked the top ones. I don't remember what that one was. But Wink and Vera are, are two really big ones. And, and these are what we consider the DIY platforms. So you know anybody can do it. Like I said, go out. You can get it at Home Depot. You can download it off the internet. You can order it from Amazon. Uh, these are some of the bigger platforms. Then you'll have your. Uh, security guys like me, you have your Honeywell, ADT, uh, Comcast, uh, you, any, anybody that installs security will have some type of platform with uh, smart home devices where you, you'll get all these preset screens and you can, the installers can install just about anything. Um, it's one of, it's kind of like your step up from DIY, it's a little more expensive. But not, but not terribly expensive. Uh, and, uh, 
yeah, it's not usually too bad. And then from there you go to custom installs. That's one of the things I do. RTI is the company that I work with and we do full-blown custom home integration. So we can make your house as smart as you want. And that's definitely what starts adding up the bill. But the one thing, and this is where I'm gonna get on. So when we're, when we're dealing with stuff like with RTI, all my controls are local, which means they reside within your house. I, I put a black box in there that everything talks to and it only talks to that box. Now the downfall to these two is everything you talk to them is going out to a server somewhere, New York, Apple, or New York, Silicon Valley, anywhere. Uh, Google's talking about bringing a data hub here to the northern part of the cities. So anytime you interact with these things, you're going out in the internet and Google and Amazon are harvesting the data off of it. So that is the one, because I do technology security too, that's the one downfall I don't like to these is the fact that they're harvesting all the data that you're, when you're talking to those, when you're telling them to turn on a light or you're saying, uh, hey Alexa, turn on Cities 97. That's all getting recorded and sent out and getting sold to somebody. So that's, that's my one caveat to these type of devices. Now also, with these, it's kind of the same thing because the one reason these hubs are less expensive and why you, you're paying a lot less for this stuff is because again, that, that device is in your home, the, the control screen's on your phone, but they have to talk to servers somewhere in the country before they come and do anything. And I had a customer out in Minnetonka that was trying to do this and his internet service was questionable at best, let's just put it that way. And he would ask me, he's like, why doesn't this stuff work? And it's like, because your internet doesn't work real well. And if your internets were not working well, these aren't gonna work well because they have to go out to a server before they come back to your phone. So we don't know how far those servers are away and there's a lot going on between your phone and, and those servers. So, but these guys aren't as guilty as harvesting data as uh, Google and Amazon are, but they also do it. So that's something to uh, keep in mind is that when, you, when you're using any of these devices, you, you're definitely giving away some information. Um, and then, oh, that's the end of it. So, and then the other thing I was talking about that I said again, uh, we just had our big thing where, does anybody have Nest equipment? Nest, there used to, there's this platform before Google, well Google bought them about two, three years ago and they kept the works with Nest platform alive. They just killed it off in the last month or two and I had to send emails to customers saying, hey, yeah, you're, some of the stuff that if we've got, we've got Nest programmed into our systems isn't gonna work anymore. And so this was one of the big first ones that it's happened where they said, okay, we're not supporting that anymore, so any, anything that worked with Nest may not work with it anymore unless it was on Google's platform because Google bought Nest. Uh, so that is another thing to kind of watch for when you're, if you're looking at buying smart devices, um, is who do they work with? Is it a generic, pl is it a generic platform like Z-Wave? Z-Wave works with everything. Zigbee works with basically everything. But Nest was specifically tied to Nest, and then when Google bought them, and then Google does what they want with them. So that's, that's another little thing to watch out for in, in the internet smart things. But why did the Google buy it? Why did they were going to kill it? Because right now, Google, Google and Amazon are basically in a fight for who's going to control the most smart home stuff. Uh, they are the two biggest purchaser, purchasers of uh, smart manufacturers. Uh, Amazon just bought, I like doing Eero Wi-Fi systems. Eero makes, a, it was just bought within the last two months by Amazon and they made a really good Wi-Fi system uh, to retrofit into homes if you're, if you're having, especially if you're having trouble getting Wi-Fi through the whole home. Uh, Eero is part of the, the new mesh systems where you have your main router and then you have little plug-in modules that you can plug in around the house and theirs worked, works really, really, really well. So if you've got, 
you know, a house that's got some issues with Wi-Fi, you can have your main router and then you can plug in this little beacon unit at another location in the house and it creates a, a link back to the router and then you can get Wi-Fi through the whole house and you don't have to log off one, log into another, stuff like that. You just walk around the house and, and it works. And their, and their system works really, really well. But yeah, they were just bought out. Uh, so that, that is the thing of the future. Are there a kid in the is that the idea? What? Uh, uh, are Google and Amazon kid the competition? They're creating their networks, you know, basically. Cannibalize them. Yeah. They're, they're trying, they're, they're buying them up. And, yeah, that's it's something that we've seen lately, especially in the last year. It's, it's getting, it's accelerating. I mean, because they know that the smart homes are becoming more accepted, especially uh, in new, new developments quite often now, depending on where you're building. Um, quite often now they're actually they're building the smart homes to start with. You know, so you, you, you're, when you're buying your new home, you're, you're buying a smart enabled house quite often, or especially out west a little more because of the tech stuff out west, but it's becoming a growing thing. Um, we're wiring more houses to be kind of generic smart homes so that people then can bring in, bring in their own hubs, stuff like that, or if it's Wi-Fi, then it's, it's really simple. We install the devices, set it up, and then when the customer moves in, they just, we just set up the Wi-Fi for them, running Comcast, CenturyLink, Dakota, whoever it is, and the houses are ready to go. So basically to bypass what you're just been saying is to go to custom because you guys will kind of... Uh... Yeah, in some ways because, like I said, our stuff works locally. It, you know, they're not... It, it's all, re and that's why you pay more. That's why, like, you know, my cheapest hub is like three, four hundred bucks. But that's because you're buying all that computer, computing power and keeping it in your house. When you're getting these other things, um, they have some computing power, but the rest of their computing power resist, re basically resides in the cloud. So, and that's why it's like Apple is actually one of the better security ones. They're, they're not as bad as the rest of them, but Apple home, home platform, home, I forget what it is. It's, there's, there's just such a small part of the industry. We, we don't pay much attention to them, but they are ramping it up. So, and so Apple is definitely a bit more security conscious that way. They're not harvesting a ton of information like these other guys are. So, and as like I said, it's just something to be aware of. It's, you know. Depends on how much information you want people to know what you're doing in your, in your house. Yeah, there's so many, uh, they finally, like, you remember, you know, all those little Roomba robots? You know, the little vac floor vacuuming ones? Well, when you first got them, they just ran around and they didn't have any links to the internet. Well, now they have links to the internet. And then they found out that, you know, these things were literally building maps of the inside of homes. So, so that they know where they're going, but this was also going out to servers and coming back to them. And guess what? They're getting stored somewhere. So... It's just, it's always, it's always something to be aware of, you know. Most of the time it's like, yeah, who cares? They got a map of the inside of my house. It's like, big deal. Security is, they just know where the room is. Yeah, so, but it's just, you know, like I said, since I'm a security person, I just, I keep track of that stuff. I personally didn't, uh, I, I get up and do my own. Yeah, that's why I said I like the, when it comes to the, I like the switches that are installed because then I can just get up and I can turn it on and off. The people that start doing those screw in light bulbs, it's great. They can control it from their phone, but you really, if you go over to the light switch and turn it off, guess what? Can't turn, can't control it with your phone anymore because you just turn the power off to it. So then they have to leave the power on all the time and control it from their phone. Okay, well, you know, they sell a lot of them. Yeah, I'd like to see the electric though. Uh, it, these don't use a ton of energy. I actually have an energy monitor. That's something I didn't include in this. That's another one of those smart things. I have an energy monitor at home that monitors my solar production and then gives me also my energy usage. And so I can watch that and watch how much energy stuff is using. Um, and these are pretty minimal. Yeah, it, it, it would do you more good to switch from a 60 watt light bulb to a five watt um, LED, but yeah, 
Any more questions? Did I, did I kind of cover what you're looking for? This is um, maybe a little off, but you're talking about using this. What about the basic electrical wiring? That, let's say that I got an older house. Would that affect if I put a smart system in? No. No. Um, everything communicates via radio frequency. So. No, it's not communicating over. It's not communicating. The old that would have been like X10. X10 communicated over the power lines, and that's the reason why X10 isn't around anymore. Is trying to communicate over power lines doesn't work real well. It's fraught with problems. Yeah, so it's all it's yeah, and it's just they work at different spectrums. That's where it's like you know that that's the interesting thing with the Wi-Fi chip. That's at 2.4 gigahertz, and basically the higher you go, the least you can't transmit through as much stuff. And so the Z wave is down, uh, I want to, it's down around 1,000 hertz. So it can transmit through more. And that's why you, and then, so it's not as much of a problem. But that's why I said the construct, how the house is constructed does make a difference. So if you're having issues but doing it yourself, call when you guys and say, hey, this is what, why your house is not, not working because the way the house is built. Yeah, it's masonry and concrete kill the Wi-Fi signal really bad. They yeah. can go through wood and a sheetrock, no problem. The masonry and concrete will really stop the Wi-Fi. And then you need a also, fancy uh, Wi-Fi system. Wi-Fi in my house is kind of an issue. It has an issue because we're at a lower level of elevation from the other houses. So it doesn't work always with the Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's where those Eero systems come in real handy because then you can you can put your Wi-Fi in more locations, basically is what you're doing, and it, it creates a network within the house. That, that can help out a lot. Or maybe that's the reason why it's not really working well. Where is your house, is, is an older home? Um, concrete or stucco? It's a wood house, and it has vinyl siding. The only concrete in my house is the floor. Okay. Yeah, so it, you just, you never know. There's all kinds of weird things that can affect radio signals. And do but the other people's um, houses around now, what they, what they're using to do too? It, you can run in, well, you can run in interference from your neighbors. Yeah. You can run in, in from interference from cell towers. You can run in, in, you can run into interference from all kinds of stuff, especially if you live to, if you're living over by the, if you're by the airport, if you're too close to city hall. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that messes with radio frequency. That's why when contractors go to me and go, everything's turning wireless, we go, yeah, but just wait till you get to the house where that doesn't work. Uh, it's still better right now to hardwire as many things as you, as you can to relieve the strain on your Wi-Fi system. And that, that was another thing that I was going to get to with these, the fact that they want to start putting all, they're putting all these Wi-Fi chips and stuff. It's like if I could bring, if I brought up the network map in my house right now, I've probably got about 45 devices sitting on my network. So I've got 45 devices that are sitting on the local area network from about 15 devices that are hardwired to 30 devices that are sitting on the wireless. Now I've got some heavy duty stuff put in to work with that. I don't have a bunch of the, all my lights switches are Z-Wave, so they're talking to a hub. So those 20 switches are talking to one hub, and then the one hub talks to the internet to, to get to me. Now just imagine if I, with my 45 devices, if I had another 20 of those Wi-Fi, now I've got 65 or more, and that's getting to be a problem now because most, most residential routers that you get from Best Buy or Comcast brings out to your CenturyLink or whoever, they're not designed to talk to that many devices on a regular basis. They might be able to do it for a short period of time, like if all of a sudden you had a bunch of friends over. That's why you're, having, you're getting into, you have to have more robust home networks. If, if all this stuff is gonna start sitting on, the, on, the, on a wireless network or a home, a home network, you gotta have better systems. I mean, when we started doing this back in, when I started doing this in the early 2000s, you, if you went out to Best Buy and bought a Linksys router, it had 25 addresses. That was it. That's what it had. And for most 
people for years that was fine because you had a laptop or you had because this was before smartphones so you had a laptop you had a computer that was about it well fast forward nowadays your average what was the stat the other day the average consumer is 25 to 45 devices the average house by done by somebody like me is 80 devices sitting on a local area network so that's why we've become pseudo network managers because so much has to sit on the home network these days yeah it's quite interesting but that's how things have changed over the years I've been doing this for 18 years so I've seen an a lot change over that 18 years I'm trying to grab 25 devices. I haven't passed. I don't yeah. have many. Oh, okay. Do any of the devices have battery powered? Like, do many of them uh, notify you if the battery's yeah. going out? A lot of the two, and that's one of the big things now, like in the security platforms, is two way communication. So they'll notify you. Like, the Ring, the, the Ring video doorbells will run off strictly off a of battery. They'll email you when their batteries are getting low. Um, some of the locks will, some of them just go dead, and that's a problem. But some of the newer ones now will notify you. You'll get a notification, either text or email, saying that the battery's low. Yeah, I actually had a customer had to get a locksmith because he wasn't paying attention to his battery low notifications. Yeah, and he couldn't get into his business. But sure. so I'm interested in remote monitoring. Okay. A long distance. Um, one of the questions that I've got is, is there a, a device that I can use for measuring um, uh, or watching water level in a sump master? Oh. So I can kind of monitor the, the status of the, the drain tile draining into my home. In other words, so it gives me a heads up when the pump is not functioning, so I might have a problem. Um, not off the top of my head, but I'm sure it exists. The, the simple one I know of is, is basically the, is the, is the trips, is the trip switch, which basically says the water level gets too high, is we put a little monitoring switch in there, and let's say it's at, you know, you know, a foot away from the top of the basin, it gets up that high and it trips, and so you now you know you have an issue. But I don't, but like I said, I don't know of any because I've never had to deal with it, but I'm sure there's somebody out there that's actually got a floating monitor. Are you familiar with LaCrosse technologies? Do you work? I, no, I've heard, I know who they are. Simple devices. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got one for monitoring uh, freezer temperature, yeah. uh, room temperature, and then humidity level. And it's pretty good device. I, I'm just, I'm curious. I've heard that they have something like that, but I, I don't know how it would function, aside from having yeah, it'd have to be something that floats up with a water level, have to be connected to something that then calls out. It was a bunch of them. I just looked. Yeah. I just looked. It was a bunch of them. Yeah. Two lacrosse technologies, or just different, tons of different commands. That's why I've never dealt with it, but I was like, it, give me a second to Google it, and I'll find out real quick. And yeah, it, they, they make something for everything now. I mean, you can get, like, I have solar panels in my house, and I'm interested in how hot the panels actually get because they're rated for maximum output at 77 degrees. I can get a, a remote Bluetooth monitor, stick it up there on the side of the, the panel on the frame, and it'll give me constant readouts of the temperature of that metal. So, yeah, it, basically you name it, it's out there these you know, days. Kind of entertained me is uh, they have smart fire alarms, but now the Alexa just listens to the sound of the fire alarm, so it'll tell That's you. That's a new one, yeah. Even if you don't have a, you know, smarts, like it's got a microphone on it, you can listen for glass can, breaking or yep. for your fire alarm going off and let you know. Yeah, it was interesting. I actually had a customer the other day calls me because her carbon alarms are going off. So they have the carbon alarms start installed in the house that are required by, you know, building code. And then I also do the security monitoring for the house. So she calls, she calls and I look, it's like, well, the carbon alarms for the house are going off, but the security one isn't. So I'm looking at it, you know, it's, it's not going off. And in the end, they were just one of the, in, that's the problem these days is if you've got a newer home, those suckers are all interconnected. 
So if one alarm goes off in the bedroom downstairs, they go off for the whole house. And that's what hers were doing. And so one of them was bad. And, but luck, because she had the security one, I can look at it and go, well, it's, it's still fine. So it's, it's not a carbon issue. You've got an issue with your, your built-in alarms. So. so do home center stores have a lot of options for you know, security for home monitoring? I guess I've never um, the aisles to see what even is. I think Home Depot probably has about the best selection, but um, you, you go online, I mean, you, you can get just about anything these days off of Amazon. There are certain platforms that tend to seem to work better. Uh, Simple, Simple Safe. That's a, like for home security, that's a, become a real popular one that seems to work reasonably well. Uh, the Ring one that ties into the Ring camera system, that one seems to work okay. So if you just want like basic, you know, a door here, a motion sensor there, a window sensor there, they seem to work reasonably well and they're designed so that the average person could put them in. They're all battery powered. Um, but those batteries, you'll usually go anywhere from, you know, a year to five years, depending on where it's placed, how often it's used, uh, stuff like that. And then usually they'll get alerts and when batteries need to be replaced. Sure. Uh, the smart LED, LED lights? Yeah. I mean, they're like really expensive if you want to like, put lights in your like, home. Is there like an alternative to the big um, brands where you can buy like, some, like Price ones that are still work better? Well, it depends on what you're doing. It's like Philips Hue, you know, they, they have a, pr they're pretty expensive. Uh, they, and, but if you want the, the fan, you know, because they do all the different colors, that's one of the reasons. Um, uh, you know, when you get into like these linears and stuff like that, I think they're 15, 20 bucks. I mean, you know, like I said, the only downfall is you screw them in and whatever, wherever you put them, then you've got to keep that light switch on, otherwise they won't work. I mean, you can turn them off, but then once you hit that light switch, they're off. They're, they're not working anymore. So if you're, a little, if, you, if you're a little electrically inclined, you know, you can get these light switches, you know, for 25, 30 bucks. And you don't have to change the light? For you don't have to change the light bulb, but you have to switch, you have to change out the switch. Um, and as long as it's not anything crazy, um, as long as you're, as long as you're dealing with like a, like one switch, you know, if you only had to swap out one switch, that's not too bad if you're a little familiar with electricity. If you're not, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but you know, I don't know how many DIYers we have in the room, but a regular light switch is pretty easy to switch. What? Like the, the switches, can you do like geofencing or something? Or Ooh, geofencing. No, now you're, now you're talking something You'd have to, your, your smart hub, whatever you're tying it to, would have to do geofencing. And for everybody, any, geofencing is basically saying that with your smartphone, when you get within X a distance of your house, you want something to happen. That's what geofencing is. And it's also for tracking vehicles and stuff. But um, like with my security systems I install, we can, we can install a geofence around the house that says when you get with an exit distance of the house, turn off the security system, you know, and then do this, this, and this. It's a way to trip stuff. That, that's, that's a whole nother thing. I and mean, you can do that with some, of the, with some of the platforms, but it has to be installed in the platform. Yeah, I used the uh, Samsung. Yeah. Yep, so that hub, is that system is part of a geofence that they tie to your phone. You know, when you're asking about light switches, these Bluetooth ones, they're around like, they're like 15, 20 bucks. They're pretty cheap, but they're battery powered, but you just literally put them over the top of the light switch. So it's, the installation's pretty, pretty simple. Now this is an installed switch like I've got here. And, it, and if you have basic electric knowledge, they're easy to, they're easy to swap. Um, and to me, that's re, for, if you're wanting to control lights, I control like, usually all my outside lights, so you can, you know, you can turn, them, turn on your outside lights. That's usually for security. And then a bunch of the ones in, in certain ones indoors, depending on what you want to do. But I, I like the light switches because then you can go up there and just touch the light switch to turn stuff on and off too. That, that works out real nice. And then 
and like I said, however you want to tie in your, your voice assistants, you know, Alexa or Google. So in that system that fits over the, the toggle light switch, mm -hmm. is it a device that flips the toggle? Is that Yeah, it, there's just a little battery powered device in here that flips a toggle and I gave away a couple at a seminar and I thought the person said you know, it was a light switch that was getting used a fair amount, and you know, they lasted like two months. Because I think they were just double A's. But if, if you're not doing it a lot, obviously it'll last longer. If you put lithium batteries in, it'll last longer. Um, it just, but like I said, the installation's pretty, pretty simple.